want you to know that <laughs> it's a progression of victory. Let's look at this uh, definition. Victory is a, a term that originally is applied to warfare given to success achieved in personal combat after a military operation or success of any kind of a competition that someone goes through and they gain it. Once you have got a victory, the devil wants you to understand to forget about it. In other words, I see it in our, in our national program, uh, State Department program in America here today, a victory that we won in this place and then all of a sudden uh, it's gone. Billions of dollars spent, all these lives spent, and it's gone. Uh, some of you came out of uh, ab abject circumstances when you were born again and you gained victory over something. Uh, starting with yourself and over circumstances in the world. And, wow. Well, but the true victory, the victory of God, is an ever-growing victory. Uh, I look back on my life and I look at milestones of victory. You know, victory in my faith with the Lord. Victory in His dealing with me. You know, one of the big things is to let God deal with you. You know, I, I, I am so surprised how, how so few people uh, today that I meet, now, I'm not talking in general, just the ones that I met, are, are so surfacy in allowing God to really deal with them because they don't want to, they don't want anybody to see them in a bad light. Well, that's that to me is ridiculous. That to me is the worst thing you could ever possibly do. That's just like pride walking around. Because to be free is to be free and open to the Lord. And believe me, the Lord is going to continually bring bring things into you. He's going to He's going to convict you. He's going to convince you of right and wrong. He's going to show you what is good to do. Because he wants to establish something in you. And that is a progressive living victory. The whole reality of Christianity, as Jesus said, come and follow me, for I am the way and the truth and the life. That reality is a reality of ever continuing victorious overcoming. And that is what is for you. So I, to me, I, I, I do, I get shocked sometimes when I, when I run into other believers. Now, I don't give any place for accusation against other believers, but I am so, I used to be so concerned over how weak they were in their relationship to God. How willingly they were to let the Holy Spirit change them. And Finally, the Lord says, what's that to you, Michael? You follow me. And so we've gone on. And I want you to know, personally, if I'm boasting, I'm boasting 100% in the Lord. I am walking in incredible victory. And many of you I know here are also incredible victory over all kinds of circumstances without circumstances within circumstances in your mind, in your will, your emotion, in your body. This is his life in you to bring that victory. Now you know the word tells us we are to fight the good fight of faith, right? Well, I, I found it that well, I was in Africa and, I, and over in Romania. I found it they don't even know what that is. It's like somehow they miss the very beginning of their, of their walk with God to have faith. I say, well, what do you got faith in? Well, I, I don't know. I'm going to go to heaven someday. Well, what do you got faith in? See, in Second Peter chapter 1, it says that these exceeding great and precious promises, by these promises, 
We're partakers of his divine nature. We get changed. We enter into that new creation life by his promises. Now I had a, a long time I had a, a, a big wrestling match with the Holy Spirit about much of the body of Christ to where all they ever get as far as uh, uh, any kind of discipling is to learn uh, the story of uh, King David and how he was hiding in the, in the, in the cave or about Daniel and how he, he uh, uh, you know, didn't get eaten by the lions and I'm going, wait a minute, wait a minute, those are good and I need the word of God like that but as far as my faith goes, it's got to be toward something that's going to cause me to progress continually. In other words, if I'm following him, I'm not sitting still. I'm moving. I'm going on. I'm increasing in the promises of God. Promises of God. Here in this country, I've noticed and other places. I couldn't believe it. I'm, I'm out somewhere, I don't know, in some village out in, in, uh, in Kenya. And somebody come up to me. Well, you know, I don't still believe in that prosperity message. I'm going, where did you get that? So how can you not believe in God's word? Well, okay, well, let's see. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I don't believe in healing. How can you not believe in God's word of promise? It's because you're believing in something else. Now, Jesus is the promise. He's the big picture. He's the one that we all are going into. That we might grow up unto him, unto the fullness of the measure and the stature of Christ. That is the call for every single one of us. All of us. Nothing less than that. Nothing less. And how do you get there? Promises. Not vain imaginations. Not some religious swirl. But the promises. And I found so many people never got that as their foundation. That this is the direction that they personally are to take. Is to walk after and have faith in the promises of God. Many people, I've found, have been fighting, fighting. Now, I've been out here ministering about being a new creature for, and a new creation for, I don't know, 40 some years. And I've had people fight against that promise of God. Fight against the promise that you can be a new creation. Fight the good fight of faith. Good fight of faith. Guy said one time that, that it's a good fight because you win. Well, you only win if you fight. No. And believe me, you lay hold of the big picture, which is so simple, but it's a big picture, and that is that you are a son of God, and everything else about you is going to be changed into that image. That's the big picture. Well, maybe you don't see that every day, you know, walk in there. But I'm going to tell you what, if you don't believe in that, then what are you doing? How can the Holy Spirit even work with you if you don't believe in the promise? And that's the beginning promise. He said, hey, if you follow me, if you believe in me, I give you eternal life. That was the first promise he gave us. That was the promise that the Father gave to him. This is the command that the Father has given unto me, even eternal life. So then you believe in him, it's eternal life. Well, you don't know. Oh, I don't know what that's about. And I don't know what. But it doesn't mean that you're supposed to understand it. You're supposed to be able to get it. You're supposed to be able to teach it. It means that you're supposed to be able to believe it. How many of you saw walking, Jesus walking down the street there today? Nobody, because you don't see him. Blessed are they that have not seen me, but believe. Little little thing down inside your soul, like, like a little belief that you can believe. Well, you know, he didn't make it hard. He didn't make it difficult. It was religion that made it difficult. It was religion that kept people beat down and beat down. Christian religion that did not teach the basic principles of God. 
did not teach the basic principles of walking after Jesus. Taught more moral things and more things of the world and things that pass away. You know, how to, how to be like Daniel so that you can have this. But then 10 years later you find out, well, that doesn't work anymore because I'm older now. Hey, all of these things pass away. What Jesus gave us was the basics of reality. That if your heart stopped today, I like that, stopped, that the reality of where your faith is will show up immediately. So what do we do? We put our faith in the Word of God. Who we are, what we are, and what we can do. Now victory is an ongoing progressive manifestation of Jesus in you. A lot of people don't even believe it. Don't even believe. Now they've never really considered all or even a little bit of what he did on the cross. He took it all. What? Everything that could ever happen to you. Everything that you'd ever done before or you're doing now or you're doing it. Everything. He took it all. Because he's God. Well, how can he do that? Because he's God. So when it comes down to that, it's a, like a basic of faith. Do you believe that he is? Do you believe that he died on the cross for your sin? Do you believe he rose up from the dead? There are many people right now, today, that would name Jesus and say, yeah, I'm a Christian, and yet I tell you the truth, if the trial came down, they would not believe it. If it came down to really being tried on, do you believe he rose up from the dead? They would not believe it. Because the corruption that comes from not believing is the tool of the enemy. Pretty amazing. Let's look at this scripture. Which I don't have written here, but I will just give it to you. Maybe I do have it there, isn't it? No. Okay. This is what he said from the beginning. So, in the beginning, we take this. This is what Jesus said. Follow me. He said, this is they that love me. That do my commandments. Not talking about the Ten Commandments. Not talking about the good, bad, and evil commandments. Talking about his word. James also gives us, blessed are they that hear his word and do his word. If you hear the word and do not do the word, you deceive yourself. This deception is heavy on the body of Christ around the world and I want you to know it's your duty if you understand these things to intercede and pray for the parts of you that you've never met before. But the deception is simple. If they're not doing the word, and I'm not talking about the religious word or the, or the word of, of some kind of, you know, what does he say about you? The word of promise. Now a promise is always lifting me. It's always bringing me out of a problem, out of a situation. If I sin, the promise comes to me. It says, you can repent. He's faithful to forgive me. And the blood of Jesus cleanses me. If I don't repent, I get in more trouble and more trouble and more trouble and more trouble. I'm not a doer of the word. But the beginning of the doing of the word has to do with believing who you are. Once you became a believer in Christ. That you actually are born again. You know? I know a one lady so precious to me. I've been watching her grow for years and years and years. And it took her seven, eight, eight years, six years, eight years, however long it was. She came into the church. She says, I know. I'm a new creature in Christ. I really don't know. After all of those years, finally it got through her. But you know, that was back in the beginning. That was years ago. Now it's for you and it's for all of you out there 
And it's for everybody that you know. If they do not believe their new creatures in Christ, they are deep trouble. They are deceiving themselves. And that's the tool of the devil, to get them to deceive themselves. But let's go on to victory. We've got the foundation. Let's build on it a little bit. Da -da 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 -da. The test of the genuineness of our love for God's family lies in this question. Do we love God himself? Do we obey his commands? For loving God means obeying his commands, and these commands of his are not burdensome. For God's heredity within us will always conquer the world outside of us. Believing in the promises is the path. The path. What is the victory? Resurrection from the dead. Have you made it there yet? Maybe to some extent, but that's the full, that's where you're coming into. Being fully resurrected, fully a new creation. And the beginning and the walking in it is the same way Jesus did. He walked in the promise. He walked in the promises of the Word of God. But he walked in it in such a way we haven't even personally seen yet. He had abundance of everything at all times where he needed nothing. I got 5,000 people out here. Oh, well, let's just feed them something. <laughs> now, you and I might go out here and try to, you know, sell our bus or something and, and uh, you know, make a, get a bunch of money and go buy the food somewhere. But he had even a higher realm of that promise working in his life. Everything that we saw him do, everything that we, we, we can imagine that he did, is something that we should be believing to be manifested in us. So you can't follow Jesus and stay separate from him. You can't follow Jesus and be separate from the word of God. You can't follow Jesus religiously. You have to follow him in life, in faith. Because in following him, he causes you to be one with him. He's already one with you. He's already taken your life. He's already taken you. You are his. And unless you come to the point of being so deceived that you don't believe anymore in him, that's the only way you can lose what he has for you. But believe me, the devil is working on that kind of deception. To get a person so deceived, self-deceived, that they don't even believe <clears throat> That he died on the cross for them. I've seen people so deep into sin. Over and over and over and over again. Their conscience so beat up with sin. Over and over and over again. Finally they have come into unbelief. I don't believe Jesus can save me. I'm too far gone. They did believe for years. But they just kept going into sin. How do I stay out of sin? A promise of God. A promise of God. God's promise says, they that are born of God do not sin. I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know how it's going to work in me. But that's what it says. Do I have to figure it out first and then believe it? No. I'm going to believe it first. Then I'm going to do it. Well, so I, fall, I find myself, you know, in some kind of lust or some kind of deal. Some kind of sin. And I find the promise that says, okay, so you did it. It's not you, but it's sin in your members. Repent. He's faithful. In other words, the promises of God are the victory for every circumstance I'm going to run into. Have a flat tire out in, on the dirt road where there's nobody at. No jack in your car. What's the promise of God? Number one comes to me is to rejoice. <laughs> the word of God says, you find yourself in a bunch of trouble, rejoice. So I get out, jump up and down, hallelujah, praise you Jesus, praise you Jesus. Uh, okay, thank you Lord, hallelujah. Next promise of God, he makes all things work to my good. Oh, thank you Lord, praise you Jesus, praise you Lord. Next promise of God, 
Lord, I just come to your throne of grace and receive mercy and help in this time of need. And within a short time, oh, some guy just happened to be driving out on this same road and he has a jack in his car. Lord, I'm hungry. I was traveling for two days hitchhiking across America, traveling, ended up out on a highway in California, hadn't had anything to eat for a couple days. Lord, you know, if you want me to eat, that's fine. You said you provide everything that, that I need that pertains to life and godliness. Well, this has to do with life. And I just got out of the car and I just started walking down the road and I tell you the truth. So a little white thing up there in front of me and I walked up in front of that, just kept going. Uh, just a white bag. And I opened it up and there was a fresh hamburger and french fries and a coke in that bag. Because I believe. Now I'm boasting in the Lord and that's okay. I'm boasting in the Lord. But victory is in believing beyond what you can do, what you can think. It's believing in His Word will manifest because God is now. And faith is now. So over the years in dealing with brethren that, that are unbelief, man, they've been unbelief about, well, you know, God gave me this sickness and you know, I can never get out of this sickness and, and you know, I'm never going to change. All of this unbelief and unbelief. I just listen, listen, I just listen, I listen. I wish I had a nail. I could just go ahead and nail them to the cross because they don't even know they're dead. They don't know that they died with Christ. How about that principle? Wives, husbands, young people, old people, every day. Reality, you were crucified with Christ. And then you can walk out of that house and realize, whew, all the blessings of God are waiting for me today. But if you are walking out of that house, still alive, not crucified with Christ, not raised with him. If you are dealing with your husband, not crucified with Christ, not raised with him. If you're dealing with your kids, not crucified with Christ, not raised with him. If you're dealing in your job, not crucified with Christ, not raised with him. Well, you know the problems you got. Because now, now is being multiplied and expanded in your soul, changing, changing your present consciousness. Let's go to another one. In fact, this faith of ours is the only way in which the world has been conquered. For who could ever be said to conquer the world in a true sense except the person who really believes that Jesus Christ is God's Son? Really believes it. You have to believe His Word. You have to believe the vision, the promises. Every promise that he stated, every promise that the apostles have given us, every promise of God is for us. Any of the curses, they're not for us. Any of the condemnation, it's not for us. Any of the problems and situations and circumstances, it's not for us. God's promise is there. Promise of God. Nothing, Jesus said, Nothing, by any means, shall harm you. Promise of God. I was hitchhiking down in New Mexico, was ministering on the street, preaching the gospel on the streets, and I was picked up by some guys because I was hitchhiking up to Las Cruces, New Mexico. And I was picked up and I was hitchhiking. And while I was there, it was at night, and they pulled over on the side of the road out on the highway, and they said they were looking for something under the seat, and I was in the middle. 
And uh, they asked me to step out. When I stepped out, they hit me with, right across the head with a pipe. Once I know of, because I was out of it by that time. Didn't feel a thing. I just wasn't there. I know they stuck me with... In the knife with a neck, in the neck with a knife, and left me out in the highway on the side of the road, off the road. I didn't feel anything other than, "Whoo, I'm going to get out of here." My body was disconnected, I guess. And I remember watching in the night sky as I see these lights coming down, and I, I just knew they were angels coming down before me. He says, "Nothing by any means shall harm you." Now, there's a promise. Well, I realized that promise. I didn't do it of myself. I wasn't even, I don't even think I knew that promise at that time. Had a vision of a little family and they were all huddled together out in an arena. They were huddled down and they were there and the husband was, the, the dad was talking to the mom and the kids and, and he was saying, listen, the Lord is with us. The Holy Spirit is with us. And let's just hold hands. And they held hands, and they were either singing or praying together. And then all of a sudden, the Romans released the lions, and the lions came and went to pounce upon them. And the vision that the Lord gave me is that they were so filled with the Holy Spirit, they just left their bodies, their bodies got eaten by the lions, and they went home. Are you afraid of pain? Are you afraid that maybe God will call you and send you to the far corners of the earth where you can live in the dirt and eat worms? Whatever you're afraid of will come upon you. Oh, well, I don't want to hear from God because he might tell me to do something. Oh, I don't want to hear from God because he might take away my whatever I'm doing that I want to do. Okay, you can have it. Keep it. It's yours. But unto those that want to believe, fear nothing. I found most religious fear about persecution and tribulation and, and prison and stuff like that. 99% of it, pure lies of fear. Yeah. Talked to a man in Vietnam some many years ago. By the way, I'm going back to Vietnam this week. <clears throat> many years ago, this guy had been in hard labor and in prison. He'd had sickness come upon him like tuberculosis, something else. He was there for five years. And he said during that time, there were six times that he was literally at the point where he knew one more breath and he was dead. And the Lord appeared to him. No, I'm not through with you yet. He said, but the amazing thing about it is on, in the beatings and all of the disease and everything, as soon as he had a little bit of pain, because the pain brings fear. The Holy Spirit pushed it away. And he was aware that it was trying to take over his body and it was going to kill him. And he, he you know, beaten senseless uh, uh, into, in, into uh, being unconscious. And yet he, he said, let's keep going, Michael. This is a guy in Vietnam. I mean, this guy changed my life. He showed me that there is absolutely no reason for any fear of anything. Any fear of anything. I know. I know. For some uh, some married people, like they got, they're, they're afraid of, of doing something or saying something or or whatever. You know, they, they want to compromise their life in Christ for fear of their spouse. I'm sorry. No good. What you fear will come upon you, but what you have faith for will manifest unto you. So our faith in really believing that Jesus is the Son of God, you cannot deny. If you really believe it, you cannot deny your participation in the cross with him. You cannot deny his word. Maybe you don't understand about having eternal life. But believe it. Believe you've got it. In the future. Believe you've got it tomorrow. Believe you got it today. Believe you had it yesterday. Believe. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. And it's not even your faith, it's his faith in you 
It's his victory in you. I found over the years that the only problem that people have, the only problem, the, the, or let me put it this way, the solution to all problems has to do with being a new creature in Christ. Changing the identity from the flesh man and the sinful man and the dead in Christ into the identity of being a resurrected son of God. His promise that he will take your soul and transform it to be like his soul. And he tells us, do not be conformed to the world. Do not be conformed to the world. And that's a big problem. Being conformed to the world. My gosh. The way the world thinks. The way the religious Christian world thinks. It doesn't necessarily, in most cases that I've seen, it doesn't necessarily think that you're a born again son of God. It thinks you're something else that they have to minister to. Don't be conformed to the world. How does your father see you? How does the Lord Jesus see you? Do you have any love in your heart? It's because he gave it to you. How could he give it to you if you were in sin? You're not in sin. You're raised up. You're seated in heavenly places with him. You're a new creation in Christ. That's how he can give you his love. Because you're part of him. You don't have to be afraid of love. It's that part of you that's already overcome. What kind of trials are you going through already? What kind of trials are you going through? Victory is not accomplished by our own might. But rather it is the will of God and the power of God that works through us that does the work. What's the, what's the secret to the whole thing? Right? Believing. Believing and receiving. Yeah. If I could go back over the last 30 years, I wouldn't have done anything different. It's cost me friendship. It's cost me this, cost me that, cost me this. You know, we, we were tallying up, Valley, Valley and I, and in and, 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 and World Missions, we tallied up uh, uh, some, <laughs> almost $300,000 we have personally spent to take the message of sonship, new creation, out to the world. $300,000. Did we have it beforehand? Was it our extra money? Not a chance. It was faith to believe for it, to believe for it, to believe for it, to believe for it. I remember several times on the way to the airport. Hey, can, Michael, can I meet you at the airport? I want to give you some money. Well, if, if they hadn't have been there, I wouldn't have had any money to spend once I got off the plane. Faith that he meets all my needs according to his riches and glory. Now, when I'm talking about money, I'm talking about where you live on the ground here. You know, what you do with your life here. You live on the ground. Okay. And money has as much to do with the promise of God as having eternal life. Except the money realm will pass away. But if you can't believe for the simplest, simplest promises... How are you going to believe for the greater ones? He said, if you're faithful in that which is least, then you'll be faithful in that which is greater. So what's a least promise and what's a greater promise? Well, money is one of the least promises. People believe it. Man, we have to teach it. We have to teach it over and over. Just exactly what Jesus said. The tithe, the offering, the alms. I mean, that's basic. That's the lowest level. Okay. Now I started off, God showed me that, and I, I had nothing. I lived on the streets, I had nothing. The first thing that I sowed as a seed was a pencil, because that's all I had other than my clothes. Hmm. But I believed in God's promise of multiplying it back. So then it began to be a lifestyle and a habit, seeking, if I'm receiving, seeking to give. Seeking to give before I've got anything. And it opened me up 
into greater promises and more wonderful things in Jesus. But one thing that happened is victory becomes established. You conquer the flu, it attacks you, you stand in the Word. You'll be able to conquer the next thing that comes on you. Because victory grows. It's living victory. You don't have to get more troops and go to the government and get more money and go to the doctor. You know, your faith will grow in victory after victory after victory because the Word of God is ever increasing. I'm sad about the situation in America today and the whole, the whole medical realm. I'm sad about it. There's nothing I can do about it, but I can talk to you about it. You take your kids and you train them from the beginning to resist the devil, resist sickness. Oh, well, it's just a, it's a disease and it's a bug. and it's a, Let me tell you something. None of that can manifest unless there's a spirit behind it. Oh, well, it's genetic. There's a spirit behind it. And you either are free from it or you're going to live with it. And, oh, well, God gave me this sickness. I'm going to tell you something. His promises are either now, yesterday, in the future, or they're not at all. I haven't been to the doctor in 30 years. This, I'm boasting in the Lord. I have been attacked Extremely. I tell you, in the last six months, I was never been attacked with my body as as much in the last six months. And I, I was even trying to, well, what is this attack? What is this thing? This, what is the definition of these things that are attacking me? Arthritis in all kinds of joints. Some kind of nerve disease in my spinal cord. I can hardly walk. For about four weeks. The bottom of my feet were full of pain. Over and over. But you know what? I have the victory. I have the victory. The victory is believing that word. Now let me tell you something. Some of the things that you're going to have to believe for. You are going to have to be prepared to believe for them unto death. Lord, if you do not heal me, and I don't say that anymore, but that's what, that's what King David said. Even if you slay me, Lord, I'll still praise you. No, it's become an absolute in my mind. Sickness has no place in me. Sickness, if it attacks me, I recognize it now after all these years. I recognize the slightest symptom, whether it's a dart coming into my mind, some feeling in my body, something in my membrane, something, the slightest symptom. And I am on it with the promise of God and God's word has made me overcome. I am just sharing this with you and I'm boasting in the Lord to tell you that it's real and it's true. And I am walking proof of this kind of faith. Financial faith. I have never had a set income my whole life. You know my lifestyle? I've got all the blessings that anybody would want. All of it came from sowing and reaping financially. Sowing and reaping, having patience, walking in wisdom, and continually to believe that I'm going to reap as I sow. Boasting in the Lord. These are foundational. These are bottom line, on the ground, practical reality. Well, I can't do that. I can't. Hey, you're never going to do it unless you start. And are you going to be tried in it? Yes. Or is it going to look like you fail sometimes? Yes. But you can't fail if you never quit. You can't fail if you're prepared to believe even if you die. You're prepared to believe, even if you're living on the street. It's all a lie. His covenant is sure. It's the lies that you're overcoming. It's the fight of faith against the lies of the devil, the fornicating lies of Babylon, telling you, oh, if you don't do this, this is going to happen to you. This is going to happen to you. You've got testimonies of that. It's where you stood. 
And all of a sudden, this big deadline you had disappeared. Or you crushed under it, submitted to it, ate it. Uh. Hallelujah. We believe and we receive. Hey, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. Unto death. The victory of Jesus is the cross. Your victory is what he did on the cross. Those steps and walking in that victory is walking in the covenant promises, God's promises for you that he made available to you in the resurrection of Jesus. See, the resurrection of Jesus is the new covenant, the new testament built on better promises. The old covenant was there and the promises of God were there. The Jews didn't mix them with faith. They weren't born again. They didn't have the spirit of faith in them. You have the Holy Spirit. You're in faith and the promises of God are for you. You find something in the Old Testament that's a promise? Believe for it. As you grow. Now this is something the Lord showed me years ago. I went out and began to search. Some guy said there were 700 promises in the Bible. Well I wanted to know all of them. Because one thing I know is that the life of Jesus in me is living and walking in that promise of God. I don't want me. It's not for me to stand up here and tell you about the victory of finances or the victory of health. It's not about me. If you see me in it, it's only as an example of the life of Christ and believing those covenant promises. What you see is victory. Will I be tried on what I'm saying today? Probably. Does it bother me? Not a bit. Because I see realms of victory that God has opened up to me that I'm going to step into that are so far beyond this physical life, I could care less about it. Faithful in the least, you also be faithful in the greater. God wants to increase you but he can't increase you if you're not faithful. He's not throwing anything away. He's not wasting anything. He's not just giving you something so that you can blow it away. He's giving you something because he wants to establish his life in you. Now this is hope. And this is wonderful, wonderful promises. This is not to beat you down about what you're not doing. It's about encouraging you. To do something more. To believe. To search out the word of God. To look at your life. Man, I tell you, how many times I've been there. Do you know where I learned it? Out there when I was hitchhiking around the country. And I get out of some guy's car. And I'm in the middle of nowhere. And I'm going, well, where am I going now, Lord? Have you ever been in that place? What am I doing now? Where am I going now? What am I going to do with this? Da, 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 da. Okay, everybody's been there. Maybe you're going to be there again. What's the promise? Ah, yes, thank you, Lord. You make a way where there is no way. Believe it, receive it. You may have some patience. It's through the faith and the patience you inherit these promises. Okay. So the promise is victory. At the beginning we lay hold of the fact that you were crucified with Christ. The victory is yours over yourself. And we all know that, whew, I believe, I believe, I believe. You know, 
God's going to do it. All you got to do is believe. And you do believe. But don't get your head into believing because your head can't believe. You believe like a little child. Well, I believe, Lord. Then wait. Receive and wait. And watch the circumstances that are against you go away. He may give you wisdom and understanding on how to speak to those circumstances. I had a testimony by, by Paul about how he spoke to a, a credit card debt. He spoke right to those people, right past those people, to the principality. And said, no, I'm not doing it your way. This is what I'm doing. Well, hold on, sir. I'm going to tell you a testimony, Paul. Uh, hold on, sir. Another guy gets on the line, says the same thing. He says, no, I'm not doing it that way. This is what I'm going to do. Well, I, I see, sir, that you, that you uh, have some understanding in this area. Okay, we agree. We'll do it. Cut his bill about one-third. <laughs> But if he wasn't faithful in the least, God wouldn't show him how to do that. So where do we start with believing who we are? How do we follow Jesus? He's walking in the promises. He's right in you walking in the promises. For yourself, for your mind, for your outer world. It is the faith that's in you that overcomes everything out here. The big picture, you have eternal life. You've already overcome. And those are the things the Lord wants you to learn. Is how to grab hold of that already healed, already prosperous, already blessed in relationships, already have something to eat along the highway. To lay hold of that. Do the simple stuff. It's all simple. Religion is not simple. It's full of snares. It will not let you renew your minds. Into your identity. It will keep you bound up. In the soul realm. But everything about that soul has got to pass. Because Jesus wants to possess it. With his life. Amen. Anybody in here have any testimony of victory? Real quick that you would like to share with us. Could be something this week, last week, last year. Barbara, come on up. Do we have a microphone? Do we have a microphone? Here we go. Danny's got it. <laughs> yeah, this is a testimony of victory to me because <clears throat> I've shared this with Danny and a few other members here. But I had a situation with an instructor at my school and she's of uh, the Islamic belief and but she took a liking to me. I don't know why, but we know why. But she took a liking to me and um, she kind of crossed out of her professional realm and uh, just wanted to be friends with me. And there was a situation where um, she was speaking and she was talking about Jesus and she literally <clears throat> cursed him. <clears throat> so I told her, I said, um, you know, I, 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 you talk, you're talking about my God and I, I can't have you doing that. Now there was a job she was up for, a promotion that she was up for, a really big promotion. And she said, Barbara, would you pray for me? I said, wait, you want me to pray for you? I, I, I can't pray for you. I, you. Who am I going to pray to? You just curse my God. Who shall I pray to? And um, she says, well, Barbara, you know, I, 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 didn't, mean, I didn't mean to say it. I, I, I don't remember saying that. So God showed me this demon that was just kept surfacing and manifesting in and out of her. Friday night, she called me. And she said, Barbara, can you meet me? I met her. And she said, I want you. She said, I heard you say something the other day and it troubled me. 
I heard you say you were righteous. What do you mean you're righteous? So you're telling me you don't have any sins? Is that what you're telling me? I mean, this woman was reared up at me. Reared up. I said, I used to be a sinner, but I'm not anymore. Washed in the blood of Jesus. Friday night, she came literally in tears and she said, I want you to tell me about this Jesus. I want you to sit down, Barbara, and I want you to tell me all about this Jesus. Praise you, Father. <laughs> Victory and testimony. Someone else? Somebody else got something? Could be finances, could be health, could be relationship, anything. Come on, hurry. Now, there was a time in my life where I uh, ended up in prison. <clears throat> and the uh, Lord led uh, a man to me. He was supposed to go to a drug program in another prison. But he said, the Lord led him to this prison. He says, I believe you're the man I'm supposed to talk to. And he walked me through uh, a lot of the circumstances that were going on in my life and, and taught me how to forgive. And uh, he ministered to me for several months there and uh, helped me understand the Lord better. And uh, the Lord took him back. Says, you're going to go do your drug program now. And I'm, I'm not wanting this man to leave. I mean, I'm just hungry for what this information he was giving me. And that night after he left, I was uh, about to be attacked by a group of gentlemen. Uh, what, what happened when I was in prison, I was forced to pick up the drops. I don't know if you guys know what that is. That's to pick up the dope and the cigarettes and stuff that come into the system. And uh, I didn't know what I was going to do. I mean, I was surrounded by about eight guys, and I just started praying. And uh, about the time they were ready to attack me, uh, the guards came in and stopped it. They lowered my security, moved me to a different prison. When I got to the next prison, I was uh, met by a group of guys that said, you're going to do the same thing, you're going to pick up the drops here. I said, no, it's not happening, it's not happening. And next thing I know, I went to use the bathroom in an outhouse because the, the, the toilets were broke down. So when I went to this outhouse, three guys came in and were going to beat me. And I started biting, wailing. And next thing I know, there's a couple guys there to help me, and, and uh, they put me in a cabin with the. <laughs> this is amazing. Um, with an old friend that I hadn't seen in about 40 years. He's a he's a biker, and he's telling me you're going to do the drops, and I'm going, no, it's not happening. You know, he goes, well, you know what's going to happen? I said, well, let's do it. And, he goes, you're serious? Yeah. He says, okay, we'll get somebody else to pick up the drops. And it's just, it's just like one thing after another, the Lord working with me. And, uh, and in, in the system, it's kind of like everybody kind of segregates. You, you, you don't really mix with the blacks or the Mexicans or different races. And, you got to keep the mic and, up. Uh, keep it up. And uh, the Lord's telling me to go talk to this black gentleman. And I'm going, well, you know, this is going to be trouble. <laughs> and and, uh, and I kept refusing, kept refusing. And, and one day, the black gentleman came to me. <laughs> so I know the Lord was working to him. And, he, and uh, he wanted to, what happened, He, I was sitting on a bench by the river at this camp. And uh, he goes, uh, I can't remember, something like, are you a brother? And I go, well, I'm a brother in Christ. He goes, right on. And he sat down and he started telling me his story about what he went through and how the Lord had led him to a better place. You know, and he wanted to talk to me about the God. And I said, yes, yes. But it was like numerous things like this that went on my time in prison. That, that uh, things change, you know, like all of a sudden the camp wasn't segregated anymore. Everybody started sitting at tables with, you know, 
And that, it's like it, it's like the George was saying. There's only one race. Mm. You know, there's only one race. It's human. Praise the Lord. And uh, say when I when I went there, I never thought I'd get out. Well, but he reduced my sentence in half while I was there, and uh, just just showed me a better way. Amen. <laughs> Walking in his way. Come on. Victory grows. Everybody say this. Victory is alive. And it's growing in me. And it follows the pattern of the promises of God. Everybody says victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Because I have Christ Jesus. Got to Jesus. Yeah, I just want to share a small testimony with you. I mean, it kind of seems small, but it was crazy when I was going through it. So I opened a clinic in Ghana, and uh, over there, there's all kinds of governmental stuff that goes on, and bribes and all that stuff. If you don't know the right person, something that should take like a week could take like two, three months, or even a year. But you know, if you pay the right person, everything will be done the way it's supposed to be done. <laughs> so I go there and uh, you know I'm trying to figure out why all this stuff, you know, supplements that I'm trying to get approved is taking so long. Everything you need is there. You know, somebody has to sign something, but it's like this per this person lost a pen or something. It's like, you know, I felt like I just go over there and buy them a new pen, you know, so they can sign my stuff. <laughs> well. So I went over there and I met the right people. And when I was talking to them, you know, they were like, Hendrix, I'm going to do whatever I got to do. It's like the favor of God to make sure you receive what you're looking for. But that still took forever because, you know, he has to go talk to the main boss and this and that and that. And this whole time, I feel like you guys are just wasting my time. And, you know, the trial behind all this, you know, I have invested all this money into this clinic. I need my supplements to get me going. And I don't have the approval. So I didn't quit. You know, if you want God to bless you as a son of God, you go through so many things. And most of it is all within your mind, in your brain. I tell you this, God is already victorious in your life. He wants for you. He wants you to believe in him that is done. Don't beat yourself up. If you want God to bless you, it's not going to be easy. You go through that trial, but you have to keep your head up. Knowing that you are more than a victory, and it don't matter what, you're, you, you are going to win this thing. The moment we start to beat ourselves down, that's like living the power of God. The God we, ha we serve, unfortunately, he, has to, he likes to make an entrance. So, you know, when it seems like all is exhausted, all is done, that's when he shows up. So, I'm telling you, two weeks ago... You know, these guys that's been slowing me down, I got all the approvals I need to do what I need to do. So, with God, we're more than conquerors. Don't listen to the enemy or their own, you know, within yourself. Don't, because, like he said, Hendrix, I myself will strengthen you. And you're more than that. He's in you. He himself will strengthen all of us. Whatever you're going through, do not lean to your own understanding. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, yeah, hallelujah. All right, hands up. Everyone that acknowledges that within them they have some victory of the Lord. That within you. Now let me see. Hands up. Let me make sure everybody's got something. Peter? I have all, I have all victory. All right, he's got it all. <laughs> We're going to get some more today. Stand up, please. Now how are we going to get it? You acknowledge that it's there, and we're going to sow it by the Spirit into the body of Christ outside of us. Close your eyes. Father, say this with me. Father, I release the victory that you have given to me. That which is manifest in my soul. I release it now into the body. Now begin to worship him with it. Release it. Release it. By faith it just goes out. Release it. Just really. 
Oh, yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you for, thank you, Holy Spirit, for taking this, taking this victory and, and manifesting it in parts of the body that, that absolutely have use for it this morning. Thank you, Lord. Now say these words. Now, Lord, I receive an increase in multiple areas of my soul, outwardly in my outward life, a manifestation. Just let it flow in. Just flow in like, like real smooth oil. Just flowing in. Over finances, over health, over relationships, over every action outwardly, over our mind, the increase of the mind of Christ. Let it flow into us from within. Over our emotions to have more of the very emotions of Jesus. Over our will. Bring us to see that we are the will of God. Full increase of victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Have a seat. Let's prepare to give today. Amen. Thank you, Father, that you bless us richly, richly. You bless us richly. Father, I thank you that you take our minds and wherever they're at in its definition of rich blessing and ask that you would expand it. Expand what we comprehend to be rich blessing from you. Increase our ability to receive. And even as we give, we give in faith. We give out of love. We give out of joy. We give as cheerful givers who love walking in your ways. We love walking in eternal life. We love giving. We love giving. We are lovers of giving. We love giving life of every kind. And I thank you, Lord, that you make this church very faithful in the low things of the earth and faithful in the great things of the Spirit. I thank you that this is a faithful church that stands before you as faithful to do your word and to believe your word. We just receive that word today. I thank you for the fire that comes with that word that burns up all unbelief just burns it off and sets us free. I thank you for that, Lord. And Lord, we just give you this tithe, this offering right now. We give it to you right now. We thank you that you take it and you multiply it into this church body, that you will meet every need of everything we need to do richly. We will never lack any good thing in you, God. That your gospel, that your word, that the word of sonship and the identity that you've given to us will continue to go all throughout the world. And that it will be established here in this city. In this city. And many will come. And that you fill this place up with worshipers and victorious overcomers and sons of God. Fill up the walls of this building, Lord. Fill it up to overflowing, Lord. Fill us up. Draw out of the churches that, and out of the world people who don't know you. Draw out of all corners of this city people who you have destined to come in and come into one mind and one accord with you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We shine the light right now, Lord, to draw in many people into freedom and victory. Amen.